Hi there, my name is Steve Beck, and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. So I put out a video a couple of days ago, which was like a quasi-religious one. It was my, you know, that little insight into my, my wibbly-wobbly, <laughs> you know, religious fundamentalist, Bible-thumping view of the world. And it, it's really just meant to express my own, uh, you know, this is just my own beliefs, my own, what I'm thinking. And it, I was really surprised. I didn't think anybody would watch it. I thought nobody, nobody is going to be interested and it got like a ton of views. I was really surprised. I, I really, I was very, I was quite shocked. So I thought, you know, I'll do some more in 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 that vein. I I you know I am at uh, I I work at your pleasure. You are the audience. I do I do what you I respond to what you guys want. So um, this is what I was thinking. I wanted to try and be like your bridge, your uh, your gateway into an entirely different universe, a different a universe that you, you know that you don't live in. Like like most people when they meet me, they they uh, yeah you know, we get chatting. I get the feeling they want to ask me questions about uh, uh, um, uh, about uh, about religion and stuff like that. But a lot of the times they just don't want to be rude because look you know. I'm kind of a nice, personable chap. You know, I get that. And, you know, people, you don't want to say, listen, I think everything you believe is utter nonsense, and why do you believe in fairy stories? Ah! Yeah, you know, I understand. That's kind of rude. In the same way, I when I meet somebody trans, who I don't meet very often, but when I meet somebody trans, I'm always going to try and uh, and give them the, 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 their proper uh, pronoun. Just, yeah, why not? Why be a dick? <laughs> That's really like, my bottom line. Why be a dick? So, yeah, if anybody has any questions they have out there about uh, theology, about religion, like, how can anybody, like, do this or that? Why they, like, why do you think that? And then we have a lot of real significant cultural divides going on in our, you know, in our world today. Uh, I, yeah, I think, just think it's good to be able to see things from another, uh, well, not see things, but understand something from another, from another uh, perspective. So, listen, any burning questions you have, go ahead, send them in, write, uh, write them in the comments, uh, email me, whatever, and I will do my best to answer them as honestly as I can, if I can. If I can't, I can't. But yeah, I'm going to give you an example of a question. I th again, a question that I think people often want to ask me, but really don't want to be rude to me, which is, you know, I think people want to uh, say, Sweet, sweet. Why, uh, like, how is it? How can a rational human being who, who again, I try to be rational, how can I, like, a rational and a, and a reasonable human being believe in creationism? It seems, you know, it seems to be uh, saying that you would have to be, you would have to believe in fairy stories to, um, to, to, to accept and to live your life by it seems very strange. You know, and I, I get, that's a reasonable question. I, I think it's a reasonable question. Uh, anyway, look, if you're religious, you know, you'll be like, well, what are you going to do? No, but it, I think it's a it's a reasonable and honest question. So I'm going to do my best to, to answer you that day. And then if, you have, if we have any more questions, we can keep going on. We can, I can do this all day, baby. But before we get there, can you hit that subscribe button? Hit the subscribe button. They make a rabbi happy. And, uh, you know, I give stuff away on this channel all the time. The stuff I'm giving away this week is Doctor Who. Two Doctor Who DVDs. The first one being... Uh, the Black Orchid. It's a two-part uh, Peter Davison story from '82, but I thought two-part a uh, two-part story is not really enough to give away anything. So uh, I'm also giving away Four to Doomsday, which is from the same year '82. This was the first one that Peter Davison shot as a Doctor. All you need to do to win it is subscribe to the channel. Subscribing being very important from my perspective. Subscribe to the channel and leave the hashtag Celery. Hashtag Celery. I'm doing the, the we'll do the giveaway. On the TARDIS zone, which will be on Sunday night. Uh, what are we talking about? I really can't remember. But we'll do the giveaway then. And uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. Uh, and I, well, I give stuff away each, you know, each week. So there's always something new I'm giving. You should have been here a couple of weeks ago. When I was giving away the Alien Quadrology. This really good box set of Alien movies. So uh, some some other lucky uh, lucky person won them. Fine. Oh, and also, yeah, go and check the video notes. It gives you all the instructions on what you need to do to enter. There's a Doctor Who uh, audio event you can also download there. Enjoy! Enjoy! Fine. So the question is, how can a rational, sane person believe in the Bible? Okay, yeah. How is it? Yeah. How is anybody comfortable making that significant leap of faith? You know, so the answer is, uh, the, my answer is anyway, that the... Um, there is no worldview. There's no the, uh, there's no worldview that I can see of that doesn't require a significant leap of faith. Uh, so, yeah, you know, take atheism for example. Atheism, requ uh, atheism requires you to believe that matter can spontaneously come, uh, be created out uh, uh, um, out of nothing, which I actually found don't find the biggest you know leap of faith for me because my brain has trouble conceptualizing it. But yeah, I, that's not the biggest problem. For me. My biggest problem is. 
that matter that spontaneously combusted, not combusted, uh, yeah, what's the word that's been brought into existence? That that spontaneously existed, shall we say. Uh, that matter then forms itself into in intensely complex systems, in intensely complex uh, uh, organisms. And those intensely complex systems uh, it, themselves exist within a, a complex system, which itself exists within a complex system. It's very hard to talk about nature without calling it creation, because it was so clearly created. Again, this is just my perspective, but it, it seems to be so clearly and beautifully created. I, I have a, you know, my, I have my, my favorite chair. Well, my favorite, it's basically the only place I sit I, I, when, I, when I'm in my living room on my couch. Yeah, I'm like Sheldon Cooper. You know, I got my, I got my, my couch spot, and uh, I look out the window, and it's, it, it's, uh, there's a tree outside. So I've seen that tree like be dead in the window, <laughs> just like dead branches, and then in the spring it comes to life and it starts to bloom, and you know, and leaves come on it. So you see this like you know rebirthing thing go on. But I was struck that you know over the well, the two days ago it was um, uh, the first day of the of the Jewish holiday of uh, of uh, of Passover, which is you know kind of a spring festival. Um, I was look, looking out the window. And I saw the, the tree, and it's now it's covered in gorgeous blossom, like this wonderful, just gorgeous blossom. And I was starting to think to myself, you know, that's just, like, blossom is really lovely. It's a really, really beautiful way that the world says, hey, spring's coming, all that cold weather, and now you can relax. Like, it's just, it's just, I was looking at it, I was going, oh, that's just so beautiful. It seems so incredibly beautiful. And I think that is the truth of, of, of all nature. You know, all nature is, you know, just this incre incredibly uh intensely complex and uh an absolutely beautiful um, um um like creation so i i have a lot of problem believing that that would be um uh creatorless you know i think that takes a a quite a quite a significant leap of faith there's a leap of faith that i'm really not come comes with making so now i'll give a look i'll give you an uh, a a reasonably good example you know of of, of that uh uh, of that whole argument, that 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 mindset. Like, imagine you're the first person to land on Mars. You land on Mars. I'm actually imagining the uh, the 1970s adaptation of the Martian Chronicles. When somebody like it lands on Mars. It was a really bad model. It was a really. It looked like an airfix model. You know, you buy from the toy shop and it lands on, and you step out and you walk onto the Martian desert. And you know, you you have managed to avoid the Asylum pyramids and the the Ice Warriors and yeah, you know, all that other stuff. And you're just walking in the Martian desert and you come across a box of Legos. So you've got to be a pretty hardcore, you know, anti-creationist. I'm not sure what the right word is. You've got to be a pretty hardcore anti-creationist. Say, yep, that box of Legos that just evolved by itself. <laughs> that just that's just you no. Know, obviously, obviously, that box of Legos did not, you know, naturally occur by itself. But so let's go one step further. Let's say you look at that box of Legos. And you come across a box of Legos, and it's formed into a, a very uh, detailed diagram of a human heart, like a medical diagram of a human heart. Now, again, you're not going to think those Legos just suddenly poof, happen to fall out, in, and oh, look at that, they turned into a human heart. You know, you, it, it, again, you'd be, you'd be insane, insane to look at the world that way, but I guess some people do. Fine, so let's say that, you know, that, that, you, uh, that has, but then let's go one step further. And you, you come across an artificial heart, like a working artificial heart, like deeply complex artificial heart that uh, that can sustain a human being and do, does the job uh, that that a heart does. Again, you could, you got to be pretty hard pressed to think, well, that's that that's a naturally occurring event. Yeah, you got to be <laughs> you got to be pretty hard pushed to go go that far. However, for some reason, if you actually found an actual heart, you know, an actual uh, 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 organically grown heart. Which is an incredibly complex organism and complex design, and really, again, stunningly efficient and beautiful. The more you look into any, just any part of nature, the more you see, wow, that is just really damn clever, you know. So, uh, that, so that heart, that heart exists within a human body, which is like a, a whole bag of these incredibly complex systems that themselves it, it work together incredibly complicatedly. So, I, I yeah, I just find that uh, to, for me. That would be uh, too much of a leap of faith to 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 believe in. So my 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 worldview, my worldview be essentially comes from what I felt was the minimum leap of faith necessary to to believe in. And uh, I'm happy to go into it in more details with any of you out there. Again, anybody has any questions about religion? Uh, I, again, I know most about Judaism being a rabbi, but I I'll do my best to to answer you in in any way I can. But you know, any burning question you have. 
Go ahead. Ask a religious nut today, and you know nobody. You're not going to get get a Bible thrown at you. My name is Sila Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, subscribe, ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop, and have yourself a fantastic and I would say blessed day. Yeah!